So I'm just gonna show you how does Google Collab works and a simple um, prediction that you can run with it. So this, you, anybody has, has a Gmail, you have a Google Collab, you just have to like press here, like just, just write Collab and you will come automatically into it. And how is this environment? It's, I mean, it's quite simple. First thing you have to remember is that you have to connect to your to a server. Okay, so it has connect to a hosted runtime. Okay, so what's the difference? I'm just going to give you a little explanation about this option because I think it's important. So if you connect to a hosted runtime, means you are connecting to the Google Collab system, and your uh, learning, training, everything will be on your Google Collab, it's not on your, it's not using your computer CPU, it's mostly using it on the servers of Google. It's cool, why? Because then you can go to your resources, okay? You can change, so right now it's running on the system RAM and the disk, but then you can change your system resources, so. I'm running another thing here. Ah, okay, so you can change your own time. Sorry. So right now it's running on the Python tree, but if you have a very I don't have it and finished. <laughs> okay, so because I finished my um oh, okay, it's here. So you, you can run it on a GPU, it's gonna be much more faster. If you are using TensorFlow, you can also use TPU. And these two are faster, none is normal. I mean it's not that fast. But I want to show you that I don't have <laughs> not connected because I have finished my GPU. So it will finish very fast. So that's why you don't mm, you need to pay for it. So see my GPU RAM is empty zero. I have used it all. But if you want more, then you have to buy me. Mm. Uh, but I do enjoy this environment. Okay, so you can connect to a hosted runtime, it could be faster if you use a GPU, right? So if you use a GPU, it would be your training, especially would be faster. But then I have, right now I'm actually running another um, training on a local runtime. What is a local runtime? So a local runtime is on your own computer. You want to connect it to your own computer. What you can do is you can um, use your uh, comment prompt and then you can um, you can connect it to your computer itself so then you are not using the power on the Google Collab and you do not need to pay, then it becomes free, right? So you can connect your local. I have another video that show you in how to connect to a local runtime. Okay, so that's about this environment. And then on this side, we, we have our files. This, okay, so we need to... Um, mount our drive so where you want to when you want to read your okay if you are connected to your to your sorry if you're connected to your um own computer then you cannot upload it on real drive you have to uh, get the path from your own computer i think i showed you in that video as well so like for example if you have it in your drive c you're gonna um get the path copy path and then you can paste it here i think i have another uh, thing that I'm running, but well, then yeah, I I can show you. Okay, so here I'm not going to see now. It's not showing anything because I'm not using Google Collabs runtime. I'm using my computer's runtime. So here. The address is in my own computer. I do not need to mount my Google Drive here and because it's working on my own server. It can read my own server. But then if you are using Google Collabs environment, 
then it can only access to online content. So then you want to upload everything on your Google Drive. So to do so, you have to press here, mount drive, and then it will ask you, you want to, you're sure and everything. So you will give it here. So then you want to, what you want to do is, it's very important to um, download the libraries before your codes, like for example, in um, MATSAB, you don't need to do it because if it's inbuilt in most of the time or in R, you need to download them. But in Colab, you always need to call for it. So I'm, I'm asking it for pandas. So always you're going to need pandas in all kinds of coding. So uh, because it will read your data into a table and it's very important. Also NumPy, this NumPy and Panda and OSTs are very basic, important uh, libraries to download. Mm. Okay, I have uh, two type of uh, Matplot. As you can see, it's for plotting, it's for figures, it's for graphics. So I'm getting it. TensorFlow is also very important for our kind of data. I want to show you is a LSTM model is a is a time series kind of algorithm. So for that, we're gonna need TensorFlow and also Cross because from Cross we can get time series. We can introduce a time series to our um to our algorithm. And then these are also other cross libraries. Okay, so I'm getting like LSTM and I'm also getting the, okay, so for pre processing. So I will talk about it in the in the codes later, but then we need to do some pre processing to our data. So that's another library. And to, and to measure our error, we are from using math library. And all this is our figures to be consistent. We are setting it. So going to uploading our, so once you mounted your drive, you can call anything that you have on your drive. So you will go to your drive. Hello. Hello, because I'm running something. And then you can get like, it's a slow, you can just do that. And like, for example, mm -hmm, just, just get pass, copy pass, okay? So we can just copy your path here from here and then you can paste it, okay? paste it here. So that would be your path. So then you can have your DF is your data. You want it to read it as a CSV. Then you want to let it know that your algorithm is a date time because you have a column, right? That it's giving you. So let me show you the date time I'm feeding to it, for example, here. I'm having a better data with five columns and one column. This is the daytime column, right? We don't want this to be a data. We want it to be our, our referring point. So uh, I want to introduce to it that this column is my daytime. Don't consider it as my variables. And these are my variables. So how do I tell it to my algorithm? So I want to, so what I want to do here, so I'll let you know that I have this historical since 2000 letter data. I have the drive the temperature mean, the dew point, the pressure, the relative humidity. And I want to do a prediction maybe for, okay, since I have the data, maybe for these 20 years, I want to run it maybe for next five years, next 10 years. So, uh, but I, first of all, I need to give it the data. So I'm going to read it. I'm going to let it know that this column in my DF is a date time. So it, it will create a date time a string here. And then I will set index. So it's an index now, as you can see, and I we look at the head. So now this is an index. It's not a variable. And these five are our variables. So in order, uh, then, we, then we want to let it know that my variables are these five. So now uh, the, the code, the machine our machine understand that these are our variables and this is our index so another thing is that usually when you get a data it's not perfect i mean it's never perfect you look, you look at it like actually this is already pre-processed i have another video that show you how to pre-process when you get it from those sensors a lot of times there is a missing value a lot of time there is a wrong value there is a repeated value so I have explained it in that video, but then again, sometimes when you clean up, sometimes you might miss things. Like here, I have a missing there, and if you have a missing there, you cannot train your model. You cannot train. So what I want to do here is I want to, I'm using field NA, and I means the empty ones or 
if there is a NAND file, so it's written. So I will just with this just one code. Like you see, if you want to do it in um, like a Excel files, it's gonna take a lot of time, and it's not gonna. I don't know. It's not gonna be that easy. Um. So here, I'm gonna write just fill in a, and everything is filled. And I want to plot and look at my data. And then I just put dot plot. So we look at our data. So our temperature, okay, it looks good. There is no missing value. The pattern looks fine, right? So we, are, we can check, okay, there is nothing of a problem. So we do check. And then, okay, so this is a multivariable um, machine learning. What is multivariable means we have certain variables, right? So a lot of times you can run prediction based on a single variable, for example, you just want to look at energy and consumption level. Like, okay, so this has house has 20 years of energy consumption data, and that's it. So based on that, you want to um, run a prediction for the next 10 years, but that's only single variables, right? So you're only looking at one variable, and that's easy. But then when you're doing multivariables, let's look at our values in our Excel. The values are so far apart. So temperature is around... 14 new points eight that's fine but then our atmospheric pressure is 1000 that's a lot of difference then our humidity is up to 100 and then our wind speed is low so they have a very uh wide gap of difference so when you feed this data if if you feed this data into your training model it will confuse the numbers because they're are so different i mean the gap is huge from one from zero or below zero to housing something so what we want to do here is we want to scale our values all our variables we want to scale them into a same range so for the machine it's easy to relate them so by that we can use mean one of the best one and people use it most often is mean max scalers you can say you can also put set it from minus one to one that's up to you here I put zero to one. So everything, it will scale. Every value, 1,000 will be scaled to zero one. Everything will be scaled. So then we will use our scaled, a scaled um, function. So then I want to convert all this to a supervised series. So I'm, I'm defining a function here. So for any data, I'm not giving any specific. I'm just defining a function here. For every input and output, if there is a NAND, again, we, we, we don't have to run that because we don't have a NAND, but we just put it to make sure. And for every variable, if it's a list, and uh, if it's not, so we are defining our variables into a supervised series that will make our prediction much easier later. So I'm going to frame this, and then I'm saying, okay, so based on this function that I'm defining, I'm calling the function super series to supervise. And then I put my scale DF and I put my window size. And then, so my window size is 24 means it's my input, right? So here I say like for everyone, one out. So my I want to give it 24 hours data and I want to get one hour. So every step. So I want you to look at the pattern daily. Look at my pattern that I have like a day before and give an output for the next next hour. Okay, so my my, my data is out. So I'm letting it know that my um training um portion is 80% of my data. So if you ever work with it, if you are doing any uh, training of a model, you have to have a portion of data for testing to make sure that your um, model is accurate or how much accurate it is. So you will usually could be 80% for training and 20% for testing. So here I just put nine times 0 0.8. So it's for training and the, the rest is for testing, okay? So this is number of variables. And then I will define all my training and testing um, variables. Okay, so then I will reshape all this um, into a 3D. 
and the output into a 2D. So these are important for you to, to, to code because if you don't, sometimes then you will you will get a 1D, then you cannot run it because they are out of shape, their array doesn't match. So and I want to define my model. So in an LSTM model, you could be very creative with your model. You would add many different layers, like you could mix the LSTM model with another GRU model, but they need to be in the same type. Like you cannot define a statistical model with a machine learning model, it's different. So, but you can mix and match. And one of the ways that I would suggest to you is referring to a, a peer reviewed publications that they have done certain reviews and they got certain results. So you can read, okay, so in this paper, maybe they mixed your and LSTM and it worked and it was better than certain others. So then you can get it from there. So you don't build on um, a speculation only, you have like a, literature to be upon it. But of course, if you want to do your own um, exploration, you can do it. But if you want to be more scientific and like more, um, like if you want to publish something or like get some peer review, it's better if you built it on previous work. So just a little tip. Uh, so here I'm adding a bi-directional model to my LSTM model because I wanted to come back and look at my um, output again. So then uh, it's coming back. And then for my LSTM uh, layers, I'm putting 50. I'm asking it to return because I'm using bidirectional. And then I'm letting you know the input shape. So I'm having the train X shape and train X shape too. Then you would run it. This would take a long time. I'm not gonna run it now because it would take time. And the batch size, and the um, validation is the testing. You let it know that this data is for testing. So then you will have your model predict. So you call model predict. So you define a model, you fit the model, and then you do model predicts, okay? So what's important here is you want to know your error rate. So I mean, absolutely, MAE and RMSE are one of the basics one I put here that you want to see how much is your error. So you can see with this model, they have a very low error rate, so it was good. So then next, I want to do a test. Test on the 20% of my data, I want to run a test. So I use the model predict again, but now this time is for is the same thing, prediction for test. But here I just wanted to plot it. I want to rescale back. So now if, if you see the data is between zero and one and you don't get anything, like what is that? So you want to rescale back the data and I'm going to plot it just to take a look at it. Okay, so for the five uh, variables, so I in this model, we have five inputs and then we have five outputs. Sometimes you have five input and one output. So depends, but right now we have five input and five output. So for each output for drive ops, you can see the the orange one is the prediction and blue. So it's quite accurate, it's quite on top. And then we will see for dew point, it's harder to predict here because there are not much pattern, right? In the first one, there is more pattern for it to detect, but here the pattern. So sometimes when you look at this, you will be like, okay, so maybe this algorithm doesn't suit my kind of data. Maybe you can try then different kind of algorithm. So also maybe you can mix and match. Maybe for my dry bulb, this worked better. And then look at here for my atmospheric pressure, maybe it was good and my relative humidity not bad, but then my wind speed was really bad. It's very low. So what we want to do is we want to maybe choose like these two. We use the LSTM model and maybe we want to run other algorithm for our different variables. So maybe for them, different variables work better, maybe a statistical model. Yeah, so that would be a simple class activity that we have. Um, in the next sessions, maybe we will talk more about different type of algorithm, maybe some statistical model like ARIMA and mixing it with other statistical model. Uh, thank you for listening and have a 